Thank you very much. We finally got there. But what I want to do is this is from Gitano Tiene in Padua, who has said is a recent discovery in the field of non ischemic disease, a unique example of combining a lethal morbid, what is called sudden death, onto genetic etiology, allowing early detection of carriers. And this is part of our European association with Gitano and with Christina and myself and others. So we're spreading the message about this entity. And why I got involved with CRY is because of a diagnosis or a misdiagnosis of arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy. Here is Howard, who died playing rugby age 28. The cause of death given was floppy mitral valve at the time. Pretty rare to make it as a cause of death in a 28-year-old male. Tragically, the baby he's carrying there is this boy, dies in exactly similar circumstances, right? Aged 18, the debt unascertained, the term that's used by pathologists when they simply don't know what or find nothing at all. Lucky enough, the histology was sent to me, it was preserved, and that's very important. And it showed a classic example of arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy, dilated fatty right ventricle scarring, histology confirmed fatty fibro infiltration. As a result of that, the family could be screened for the mutation. Vital, so it takes true from the pathology to family follow-up to genetic testing. And as a result, the family were so grateful that it funded cardiac pathology originally at Brompton and then at St. George's Hospital. So getting the people and the technology to process hearts. We're a national service from throughout the United Kingdom. We receive the heart. But in addition, in the last, you could say, five, six years, as well as the hearts, we're receiving genetic material, the molecular autopsy. So in other words, even this year so far, nearly half have got spleens. We're getting the message through to pathologists that this is a potentially genetic disease, as with other diseases. Spleen is sent. We've set up also a database with that information, which has benefited us all. As a result, we have now 6,000 cases of which arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy forms a part of, right? Arrhythmogenic making up here 3.6% of all our cases. But I think now I'm seeing more and more, we're more aware of this entity. We have strict diagnostic criteria. I won't go into detail with you about it, which we are now perfecting as well. And already mentioned, and Gerardo mentioned it, the work that's been done with Gerardo, Sanjay, and Elijah and Mete, in combined with the database, they were looking at sudden death in sports, and particularly arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy. Already mentioned 42% are SADS, but Hocum, it makes up on 6%, but arrhythmogenic in our 357 cases makes up 13%, dominates over hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. In addition, arrhythmogenic increases with age in this athletic population. So exercise is with the mutation or not mutation that it's acquired with vigorous exercise. So arrhythmogenic is very important in sudden death in sports. And it's linked to, as you say, predictors of sudden death during exertion. Now, Chris Miles also working with us on the clinical team, and I already mentioned left ventricular involvement in arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy from our database, published recently in circulation. It was retrospective, micro and macroscopic. That's very important, because just looking at a heart will not tell you at autopsy that you have arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy. It may be abnormal, or it may be normal. That's the bottom line. And we sample extensively. That is also important. Not just one block or two blocks, seven to 10 blocks of tissue, right? <laughs> Interestingly, nearly 20%, one in five of our cases, the heart looked macroscopically normal. So I tell pathologists, you cannot just look at a heart, say it's normal, and go on to the next case. 81% abnormal. That's very important, right? And here are the baseline characteristics. What's important is that only 3% were diagnosed in life and 6% a vague entity of cardiomyopathy. Again, circumstances that the younger would exercise is the older at rest. And here, 
Left ventricular only in 12%, right only in 16%, but biventricular is the predominant, 72 and combining left ventricular involvement in 84% of our autopsy cases. And not related to male sex, anything. And this is a distribution which I'll go through quickly. In other words, right ventricular outflow attack, posterior anterior lateral, and even the septum of the right ventricle can be involved. But on the left side, predominating is the posterior basal wall of the left ventricle, followed by anterior lateral, and again the septum of the left ventricle. And here's an example of a case of biventricular, the dilated right ventricle scarring thrombus even, in the right ventricle, left ventricle mid-wall fibrosis, merging into epicardial fibrous and fatty tissue, particularly in the post basal wall. Here's an example of what I call fatty hypertrophy, where the whole right ventricular wall is just a sea of fat with just trabecular muscle remaining here on the right and infiltrating into the left-hand side as well. And here's an example of fatty infiltration on the right merging into the left wall, both posterior basal and lateral wall of the left ventricle. Histology, essential in all the cases. Fibro-fatty infiltration and use trichrome stains, all right? And interestingly, the heart weight is also elevated in arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy. In other words, it can be misdiagnosed possibly as a hypertrophied heart in both male and females. So, there is left ventricular involvement predominantly in the vast majority. This is at autopsy in the left ventricle. The most common sites are posterior basal and anterolateral. The present presence of it is not associated with age, BMI, body weight, or sex. And heart appears normal in 19%. So there's a potential for missing diagnosis and also evidence of hypertrophy. So beware the normal heart, I always say. It can have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, it can have arrhythmogenic, it can have myocarditis. And microscopically, again in Chris's paper, emphasizing that you can have just subtle changes which you need histology to emphasize. And don't mix it up with abnormal fatty infiltration. Going on from that, normal appearing heart. What about focal? cases in the right ventricular outflow tract. We have just focal transmural fat and fibrous tissue in a small area. I've had three or four cases like this and it's overlap with Brugada syndrome. Number two, what about the hot phase or the role of inflammation where you get inflammatory foci in cases of arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy? We do see cases where it almost can be a mimic or can be misdiagnosed as myocarditis. These are challenges for you as cardiologists. And this is my final slide, which was done again with Sophia de Norhoa and our team, showing that the one misdiagnosis by pathologists was of arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy. The general pathologist labeled as ARVC. We said it was normal. Why? We'll tell you, it's because, right? 2005, going back again on that, we published in histopathology on the majority, this was of six to 68 year olds who had died of non-cardiac causes and we looked at the extent of fat in right and left ventricle and we found the majority of hearts, 85% had intramyocardial fat, right? Not associated with significant fibrosis or inflammation. So in other words, intramyocardial fat may be seen in the right ventricle of subjects dying of non-cardiac causes. So care should be taken not to overdiagnose, which is a big problem. I get one case a month at least, which is labeled, could this be a rhythmogenic cardiomyopathy when it's from an obese, probably middle-aged female. So that's important. This is fatty infiltration in the heart, in both normal and obese subjects, but no fibrosis or fat. It's misinterpreted by pathologists, all right? So going on from that, we leave it to the genotype, phenotype correlation, which we hope will happen in the future with collaboration between us all, which is very challenging diagnosis cardiologically, imaging-wise, and pathologically. Thank you very much.